Hello, welcome back. Uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to be going over the Kismet Libraries, and these are going to save you a ton of time when you go to make games. Uh, for starters, I want you to just completely ignore the fact that I have this weird looking scene with the 45 degree angle trees. Uh, <laughs> that was just something I threw together. You don't need that, you can do this in the test scene. Uh, what I want to show you guys is the usefulness of the Kismet Libraries and how much time they're going to save you. So I've made a new actor called Random Item. To do that you just go File, New C++ Class Actor and then just go Next and then Create It. Uh, you guys should know the drill by now, but anyways, once you have your actor we're just going to open that up. And I want to show you how this thing works. So, let's come in here. Let's say that the only thing that I want my random item to do is have a static mesh, right? So, uh, use static mesh component uh, my mesh, and then we'll just make it a U property, edit anywhere, and we'll just throw blueprint read write on there because why not? Uh, cool, so we've made that. Let's go into constructor and we'll just say uh, my mesh equals create default sub object u static mesh component. And then we'll just throw a set of description text on there. My mesh, right? And why not just make the root component equal to the mesh as well? So let's say, in my particular case, I want to take this mesh that I've created and I want to make it be rotated on a random angle when the game starts. So when the game starts, rotate my mesh to be on some random angle. Well, here's one way I can do it. I can come in here and say if rotator, get random rotator. And then, oh, I want to show you guys something. This is a really cool feature that uh, Microsoft added into Visual Studio. This is so cool. You just hover over this, click a little light bulb, create definition. Boom. Done. You don't even have to type it out now. That's how lazy programmers can be now. It's, it's really awesome. Anyways, let's write this function. Um, so we'll say if rotator, my random rotation. Oops my random rotator equals if rotator and then we'll just make it equal to zero right now and then we'll say my random rotator dot pitch equals math or if math if rand range and then we'll get a random value between uh, 0 and 360, right? And we'll repeat this for the your and the roll values as well. So we got pitch your and roll. Then we will just return my random rotator. There, done. That was kind of easy, right? I mean, kind of annoying. It's such a simple function, surely someone else must have written this function before. And that's where the Kismet Library comes in. So, the Kismet Library is a bunch of functions that are already written for you. So, right now we could say that my mesh set relative rotation. And then we can set it equal to get random rotator, right? And that works, sure. Uh, whoops, gotta put that function call on there. There we go. But someone's already written this function, and they've probably already written it in a way that is better than what I've done here. So, to use the Kismet library, all we do is come up here and we say include Kismet slash, uh, I believe it's Kismet math library dot h. There we go. And now, all we need to say, this is the glorious part, we just say u kismet math library random rotator. Done. Done. That easy. We didn't have to write anything. 
This get random rotator thing doesn't even have to be here. Done. That's it. I mean, how much time do we just save ourselves? Quite a bit, you know. Um, there's going to be a lot of times where a Kismet Math Library function will come in handy. Uh, one that I used really recently is this one here. I believe it's called Random Point and Bounding Box. What that does is if you have a trigger box, for example, it will return a random point within your trigger box. So if you want to spawn an item in a random location within your box, the Kismet Math Library can do that for you. So there's a bunch of really useful stuff inside this math library. Um, there's other ones as well, I'll show you. We have, uh, it's not just the math library, there is like blueprint function library, input array libraries, just tons of stuff. Gameplay statics is a really, really useful one. Um, all of these are incredibly useful. Uh, you should, anytime you're writing a function and you're thinking to yourself, surely someone has written this function before, go ahead and have a look in the Kismet libraries because someone probably would have already written the function for you. So anyways guys, um, that's kind of the use of that. Let's just um, prove to you that this works. So we will include this again. Uh, random rotator. There we go. And that needs brackets on it. And there you go. So this is going to get us a random rotator. So let's just prove to you guys that it works. Come back into the uh, engine here. Compile. And assuming I did everything right, which praying to Gabe and I did. Yep, there we go. So if we move our random item into the game, move this up a little bit, and I'm going to just... in. Uh, instantiate my meshes, we'll click that and then go down and I'll just use this concrete tunnel because this thing is giant, I mean we're gonna be able to tell if this has been rotated, right? So if I hit play, boom, it's been rotated on a random angle and the uh, the Kismet library did that for us, so very very useful stuff and uh, if I play again I'll prove to you guys that this has been rotated again, so play again and it is now on another different rotation, play again different rotation so it'll get a different rotation every single time and that's not all there is absolutely just tons of uh of different functions within the library so anyways guys i will see you in the next one i don't know what number this is maybe 10 but anyways see you guys later peace